Let's do another Ali Dawa video. What do you think? Okay. I think we should do this one, the gym one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So this I was one also says, curious about this magician one, but we should do the gym. The gym one. Okay. Will uh, Hijabi caught doing this in gym? Question mark. Reaction. I've got to tell you, Ali Dawa knows how to pick pick his titles like that. I really want to see what's happening here. But do not let society make you and take you and break you down like you're a piece of garbage. You are not. Okay. Well, that's good. Strong okay. Start. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's good. That's good. I mean, I like that message. It started well. Do you want to speak with confidence? No. Not really. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brothers and sisters and dear friends. When I saw this video, I was in ah, double mind in the sense where I was in a bit of mixed emotions. Usually I would get a bit upset and I'd be like, you know what? Why would somebody do that? Why would somebody who's observing the hijab outright go to a gym, wear tight, tight leggings? That I've been told that she <laughs> literally everything is wrong. Wait. Oh. <laughs> I didn't know what we were supposed to be shocked by because there's a blur, but that's what's going on. Wait, wait. <laughs> So she wait 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 wait. <laughs> I want to find the original video now. Oh my god! Wait, back up. I need to be hit with that again. <laughs> I was not expecting. Okay, so I couldn't find that video, but I found something similar here. Oh so my this... god! <laughs> it says hut. Jim hijabi oh. girl. Okay. So I couldn't find the that video, but I'm assuming it's something similar to this. But let me mute it because I don't I think it's gonna get copyrighted. So wow. Oh my god, what did what? That's not the video that I was looking for. Oh my god. What is Go back it? to the other one. Yeah, no, this oh, is, is the one is we this... need to watch. Okay, that's the one that we need to watch. Okay. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? Oh my god! There ain't no way, girl. There ain't no way. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so this is not the videos that oh, Ali Dawa was showing. Yeah! Sorry, the <laughs> caption. <laughs> it says if he has, doesn't have good stamina, then I don't want him. Smiley face. <sighs> wow. Okay, this let is me, a big thing. Let me tell you exactly. I don't know what Ali Dawa was about to talk about with, with that girl right there. I can tell you with 95% certainty that is marketing for an OnlyFans. That is marketing for a hijabi OnlyFans. That's gotta be. That has got to be. That has got hmm. to be. I'm willing to put money on it. Oh my God. This is, this is going to be a bigger and bigger problem for Muslims. Hijabi woman being sexy everywhere. This is going to be a major problem in the Western world. Really sexy hijabi woman, not just on adult websites, but just everywhere. Why would someone who's observing the hijab outright go to a gym, wear tight, tight leggings? That I've been told that she literally, everything is showing, like full out. I've been told he hasn't seen any of it. Like I've been told like he's like, do, do you believe him? Maybe he hasn't watched it. Maybe he has an editor, but I don't believe him. He had to see something to comment on it. I don't understand. I have been Someone told because, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he says, I have been told, but he says that because if he has seen it, has if he has seen it, that would be a sin. So he doesn't want to say that I've seen it. He's like, I've been told. Like, who's been telling you that? Is your editor a woman or do you have a non-Muslim editor? Tight leggings. I've been told that she literally... Everything is showing, like full out blown. Everything is showing. Everything is showing. And then I thought to myself, Ali, remember the marriage documentary? Remember episode one? What was the message you was trying to convey to others? How you as a young man, because of your society, societal pressures, and whatever it may be, that you was left so traumatized because of social standards, whatever it may be, trying to op uh, impress the opposite gender, etc., uh, being rejected, and that left you broken and hurt. So much so that you started to change yourself and have animosity and seek revenge 
from girls. This is who I was. That's who I was before. And I saw myself in this girl, in this our sister, our sister. She's a Muslim sister, <laughs> Gabby. And the son. <laughs> I saw this big booty hijabi and skin tight leggings doing squats in the gym. And I saw myself in this girl. <laughs> I love that. You know what? Slay King. <laughs> in this girl in this our sister our sister she's a muslim sister hijabi and the sun paper has covered this why because the sun paper has covered this this become newsworthy well the sun so... is a rag oh yeah you're right i showed off my squad routine for a pending uh summer body leg day keep my butt plump okay so that's right in this girl, girl. In this, our sister, our <laughs> sister, she's a Muslim sister, hijabi. And the Sun paper has covered this. Why? Because they just love nothing more than seeing a hijabi liberating herself by showing all her assets and body parts. Because that is the only thing a Western woman is good for. Sexually <laughs> walking toilets. That's what. What? <laughs> no, they're covering it for the exact same reason that you're covering it. Because it's right. unusual. <laughs> Ali, yeah. it's the exact same reason. It's because it breaks our social expectations that's why that is why they are covering it because it surprises us the same way that it surprised me yeah the same way I the mean, same reason why we clicked on this damn video <laughs> <laughs> i mean they 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 covering it because it gets a reaction out of people and given that ali dawa is reacting to it i'm getting i'm guessing they were right like ali dawa your video is the reason why they're covering it so i mean touche not because but that's also, the only thing she's good for god damn <laughs> <laughs> if somebody has like nice butt and you're like okay a good job you worked on that butt and that's a nice butt you job well done I don't understand why your takeaway from that is that your butt is the only thing that is good about you. Well, you his, acknowledge... No, no, no. His takeaway is that that's the only thing that society values you for because you have it and you show it off. I mean, why is it... Where did you get the only from? I mean, you have something that is valuable. You have a nice you know, body and congrats to you. Especially, it's not... It's, it's, you deserve to be congratulated on it, especially if it's something that you worked on. Like, mm -hmm. if you have a nice body mm -hmm. because you're born with something, that doesn't deserve much. I mean, you're lucky, good, like, great. But if you worked on it and now you have a nicer body, that's valuable. Why shouldn't that be recognized? And why is the recognition of that and uh, uh, the claim that there's nothing good about us, good about you? Who said that? Why do you think complimenting somebody on their looks is reducing them to their looks and nothing else? Liberating herself by showing all her assets and body parts because that is the only thing a Western woman is good for. Sexually objectified. Walking toilets. That's what they... I'm not saying that. <laughs> this is how they... Walking toilets. Why walking toilets? What is a toilet? Why sexually objectifying somebody? What does that got to do with a toilet? I don't have sex with my toilet. I... I pee in my toilet. I don't. Well, I mean, I know some sex. people. That's how they view sexual desire. It's filthy. Ew. Degrading. I know. Wait, when you have sex, Ali Devil, when you have sex with your wife, do you see that as something like what you do to your toilet? Like, that's no, disgusting. No, because it's huh. within the sanctity of holy matrimony. But otherwise, it's filthy. toilet. What the? Okay, but it's not about toilets. Well, some people like to be degraded that way. Okay. I don't think that's what Ali Dawa is going for. I don't think Ali Dawa is trying to... No, but the message um, is, is that it's degrading. Right. Okay. Okay. It's a woman is good for. Sexually objectified. Walking toilets. That's what they... I'm not saying that. This is how they are treated. They are walking toilets. A man has an urge, sees her, wants to ejaculate inside her. Like going to a toilet. Relieving yourself. <sighs> Islam says no. Oh my god. What the fuck? <laughs> oh my god, it's so gross. Okay, so Islam says no, you are more than a toilet. You are a human being. You have a soul. You have so much more to offer the world. Here is some of these videos, which is going to be blurred, of course. Yeah. And the Sun Paper has said, I'm a gym girl. I showed off my squat routine for a pending summer body. I leg days keep my butt plump. 
Yeah. So look, they've put her there. You know why? Because they are trying to corrupt you, woman, Muslim woman. Yes. Because you guys are the backbone of this ummah. If they can attack the fabric of society, which is the woman, the marital unit, and break that down, the rest will fall down crumbling. That's what. So the son is trying to prom destroy the backbone of the nation. And that's why they put. Does Ali Dabo really think that? What are the chances the people at the sun are like, yeah, let's destroy the backbone of the nation? And that's I don't think the he's woman. Saying, I don't think he's saying that that's their like explicit intention. It's saying that that's the the result of the sensationalism of what they undertake. Because yeah, because you guys are the backbone of this ummah. If they can, you're the backbone of this ummah. You're the backbone of the Islamic nation. That's what you're saying. The Islamic ummah, the Islamic community. So the the sun has this goal to destroy the Islamic community, the Islamic ummah. How do we get to do that? Let's show off this woman's butt for the actual, for the eventual goal of destroying the Islamic community. That's what they actually believe in. What do you say to that? I think you're I taking mean, him too literally. That's because that's literally what he just said. He says, no, it's you. not, it's not literally about the sun. It's about the forces of Western culture as he sees it. Yeah, well, I, which includes the sun. Yeah. Okay. They are trying to corrupt you, woman, Muslim woman, yes, because you guys are the backbone of this ummah. If they can attack the fabric of society, which is the woman, the marital unit, and break that down, the rest will fall down crumbling. That's what they want. So I'm going to give a message to the sister. No hate, no nothing like that. My dear sister, I have been where you have. And I know damn well you are not doing this because you know. You, you are not aware. There are certain clothes that I've been told that you wear, like leggings, like tight. No, no, it's just not even leggings. It's like tights. It's like tights. You know you wear tights? Yeah, women wear tights. And you're wearing the hijab. You're wearing the hijab and you've got a male coat, you're, you know, fist bumping, all that kind of stuff, etc. My dear sister, do not let the society make you feel so insecure because there's also videos of you showing yourself how you was before and how you are now. So it shows that there might be insecurities, uh, feeling, you know, self-conscious about your body, etc. And that has led you to make yourself look attractive. You've got a male coach, you're, you know, fist bumping, all that kind of stuff, etc. Male coach fist bumping, that's haram. You can't do male coach fist, fist bumping. There's also videos of you showing yourself how you was before and how you are now. So how was you before, how you're now? I think he's talking about- I thought he was about... referring to her being more modest versus her being immodest now. No, yeah, I, I, that's what I thought as well. But I think now he's talking, based on, I've, he's now talking about insecurities. I think he's saying that he, she used to be fat and now she has a nicer body. And because of the insecurities she had about how she looked, now she wants to show off. That's my interpretation. That's what I'm getting. I might be wrong. So it shows that there might be insecurities, uh, feeling, you know, self-conscious yeah. about your body, etc. And Self-conscious about your body. I really think that's what that's what he was referring to. That has led you to make yourself look attractive. I was there. There is nothing wrong with trying to maintain your body, whatever, for your husband, whoever. But not for the whole world to see, sister. No man who is good, I'm telling you, would see that and be like, I'll wife you that. I'll marry that. And I'm not trying to make you feel as if nobody wants to marry you. I'm just saying, my dear sister, don't let the Western world... This is a fear tactic, by the way, for women to cover up. To a certain extent, some extreme versions of it is true. But I don't think not to this level. If there's a man that is not going to marry you because you had you had, you were doing squats in the gym, then that's not a high-quality husband. But is it is true that many there are many men who would be uncomfortable if you had like an OnlyFans account? That might be the case, right? So that is true. Me, I don't know. I mean, like, it's it, it, he takes it to an extreme, obviously. But like, we shouldn't delude ourselves into thinking that it's wrong or bizarre for people to not want partners that make themselves sexually available and sexually advertise themselves to other people. Right. It's like a normal thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's also norm but it's also okay the other way around. I think we shouldn't shame either way because I think there's shaming going on both sides. There's a there are certain people who are like, you know what? I don't want a partner that has been having all these pictures all over the internet. I'm not comfortable with having a partner like that. Oh, I'm like, okay, you do you. But there's also somebody who like, you know what? I don't give a crap. I think it's fine. That's fine too. I think both is fine. I think it's your just personal taste. If if the if a man comes like this girl, I'm not comfortable with the fact that she was so sexually available on the internet. 
I'm not comfortable with that. And some people shame that man. They're like, how dare you? Oh, you want to limit her? No, I'm not limiting her. She can be like that. It's just not for me. I don't want to be with somebody like that. I think it's okay for people to have personal choices about who they want to be with. But the other way is true too. There might be another person who like, you know what? She was, I don't know, she was on OnlyFans. I'm okay with that. I don't mind that. Some people shame that man. I'm thinking shaming on I both mean, sides is wrong. Right. Well, yeah, this is normal. Like, if there's a man that makes himself extremely sexually available to women, we call that man a player, a womanizer. This is understood that that's yeah. unattractive behavior that's not yeah. ideal for potential but, long term long term stability in a in a lifetime partnership. Like, yeah, but I mean. I don't think people's history is something that you should hold against them all the time. I think it would be good if you understand that, you know, that was them then, and now they're moving on to another chapter in their life. As long as it's observed in their behavior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also, I also think it's okay for somebody to say, like, I have no problem with any of this. Of course. You know, if somebody, yeah, if somebody says, you know what, I was on OnlyFans before, and I'm still on OnlyFans. Are you okay with that? And somebody was like, hell yeah, I'm okay with that. Like, okay, we shouldn't shame that man either. You're like, how could you be okay with this? You should not be okay with this. Well, I, oh, yeah, I they, am okay they, with they it. They emasculate him. Yes. So deeply. I, 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 I just think like people from both sides pretend that it's only being happening on one side. I'm just I'm just trying to say that we should just let people live the way they like. If you are, for example, a man that is not comfortable with the woman in your life to be this available online, then that's fine. Don't be okay with it. And don't let people shame you for having that personal choice. But on the other side as well, if you're a man who doesn't give a crap, who is completely okay with your with the, your girl or your wife or whatever to be on OnlyFans before or even during your relationship. If you don't mind that, don't let people tell you that you are less of a man for being okay with that. You are just understanding that this is what your preferences are and you're just being true to yourself. Both of them. Both of them are okay. If you feel as if nobody wants to marry, you see that and be like, I'll wife you that. I'll marry that. And I'm not trying to make you feel as if nobody wants to marry you. I'm just saying, my dear sister, don't let the Western world make you believe that the more you show, that the better it is. No, it isn't. I don't know what kind of friends you have, my dear sister, but do not let society make you and take you and break you down like you're a piece of garbage. You are not. Please. But, 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 but Ali, you are part of the society. You are doing the same thing. You are part of doing that. You are telling her that she is not worthy of marriage even if she's You've showing her... you literally compared her to women that he considers to be toilets. To yeah, like, look at it. Like, exactly. You, you compared a woman who's doing this to a toilet that you go pee in. You are the part of a society that is doing that the most. If any part of society is doing that the most to women, is the conservative part of society. Telling women that they're garbage if they don't fit a certain model is what conservatives have been doing traditionally the most. I understand that now progressives are catching up and doing that to certain women sometimes, but this is a new thing that progressives are doing. You, well, how do you think progressives are, are doing that? I, well, I, I mean, if they if progressives are telling women that if you don't do this and do this, you're not worthy, you're not a real woman, if you're not independent, if you are looking for a man or if blah, 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 you know, you're not mm. a real woman and telling you, you know, or, or telling you that, you, oh, you should be open, sexually open. If you're not sexually open, then you're insecure and you're just like, this is patriarchy that is holding you down and making you Approved. insecure. Like, yeah. yeah, like if somebody, if a woman is... Criticizing no, I'm just, progressives, it's a, the excesses of the sexual liberation movement. Whatever, that's a new thing. I, I'm okay. I'm just saying that's even if that is pressuring women to be a certain way, any kind of pressure that is limiting people's choices, I'm against. Whether it's coming from the uh, left or the right or progressives or conservatives, 
limitations i'm not good for i'm not good with limitations i'm not good for pressure i'm more, i'm more in favor of people discovering what fits them best but what i'm saying to ali daba is that when you talking about society pressuring women to be a certain way from the liberal side this is a new thing it, even if there are the ex, and it's rare it's the excesses and most of the time within the liberal circles we are more in favor of more choices for more people based on how they want to live their individual lives. This is, but you guys, the conservatives, have been doing this for thousands of years. Look in the mirror. Look what you are defending. Pressure, telling women that they're garbage unless they live a certain lifestyle is your rule book. This is literally in your books. It's not even a metaphor. This is like, that's what you're, read, read the hadith. That's what the, that's what, that's what Islam does to women. Women are literally honor killed for being RAPE'd. I mean, we have literally yeah, been all... taken against their will, and their life is so disposable that they're murdered for their own assault. You cannot get treated more like garbage than that. Right, exactly. But do not let society make you and take you and break you down like you're a piece of garbage you are not please read okay so please read i want to suggest you read the quran quran 4 30, chapter 4 verse 34 this is surah nasa all right so here uh, so this is the quran this is the verse in the quran that is telling women that if they, if telling men that if they fear disobedience from their wives okay first of all remind them actually the actual translation is to not talk to them then ignore them from when they, you go to bed so the actual translation is to not allow them in your bed then hit them here there's actual this part is azra bahunna and then hit them this is that's is the quran make you and take you and break you down like you're break you down like what the quran says like like hit you when you don't uh, fit when for the crime of not listening to your husband for the crime of not being obedient the quran is literally telling husbands not allowing them but actually commanding them to hit their wives if they are disobedient this is what Islam does, Ali, not the, more than the rest of the society. You're a piece of garbage. You are not. Please read the book called Beauty Sick, where it talks about the, the sickness of beauty. Why do you think women are going to lengths of getting their lips done like a balloon, bro? From one line, it's like a balloon, bro. It's like a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Continue. He's got a point. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, but that's not a good comparison. Getting your lips look to look like a balloon might be insanity and too far gone. Like it's that's too far, okay? And it's not healthy. But going to the gym and looking sexy, that's a healthy way of looking. So beauty sick, yeah. There are some excesses. There are some things that people do that is too much, that is not even healthy, that is not good for their body. But you are comparing to this is a false, this is a false comparison. If the, what, the healthiest way for people to look better is going to the gym. That's a healthy way of trying to look be beautiful. A balloon, do anyone else come start flying? Your eyelashes are massive. I'm not talking about the system, I'm talking in general. You're getting everything <laughs> done and you're telling me. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to continue, continue. <laughs> telling me you are free? My sister, I know you do not choose. You do not do this because you want to, because you've yeah. been made to feel so. And I'm telling you, my dear sister, you within yourself, Allah's created every creation beautiful. Don't go to the... But that's what you're doing. That's what the hijab is. You People are... Like, you could say that about everything. You could say that about the hijab and the Islamic way of life. People haven't... Cho they, they are not free. They haven't chosen that. They have been made to do that. Where you're committing haram and thinking, I need to do this to attract a husband. Mm -mm -mm. You are using your aql over the naql. Meaning you're using your logic over what Allah's promised you. Allah has created... So you're using the aql more over the naql. You're like, you're using your own wisdom instead of accepting the the... Scripture and revelation. Like That's what he's rhyme, saying. I'm not gonna lie, they get me. Yeah. <laughs> but he's literally telling people not to use their brain. You're using your brain instead of trusting in Allah. That's what aql over the knuckle means. Like, why are you using your own wisdom? He's basically telling people he's telling women to shut off their brains. That's what he's telling them. Mm. You are using your aql over the knuckle, meaning you're using your logic over what Allah's promised you. Allah using your logic over what Allah says. People so don't this is 
Ali, Ali Dawa is suggesting to women to not use their own logic. And he's like, oh, yeah, society is forcing you to do certain things while he himself is telling women not to use their own logic and just Did trust the way of Allah. The study of cultic abuse and thought reform, this would be termed a thought terminating cliche. Like, when you have something yeah. that could be a critical thought, you're taught cliches that reiterate that are reiterated to you that are then meant to be triggered when critical thought starts to enter in your own awareness. It's a, it's a cliche that helps shut things down, shut down that critical thought. Yeah. Just like Andrew Tate is like, Oh, be aware of the matrix. The matrix is coming to get you and control you. And then he literally makes a course that does exactly what he says. The matrix does. Two men and women control them, steal their money, trick them and steal their money. This is like Ali Dawa. He's, oh, the society is trying to pressure you and make you and control you and make put you in a certain box and not let you be free. And they're like, okay, and don't lose your mind and just listen to me. Just listen to Allah. Follow the Islamic way and don't use your own logic. Ali Dawa, you are more like the thing that you're describing than society itself. Allah has created the heavens and the earth, billions of galaxies. It is not hard for Allah to find you a husband. And I'm not saying you're doing this for a man. I'm saying you could be doing this to keep fit. It's all well and good. Nobody's saying really nothing about that. The point I'm trying to say is the fun. Why does he keep checking his watch? Every time he does that, I feel like he needs to be somewhere. He doesn't want to talk to us. I can resonate with you. And I know where you're coming from because I went through the same things. But all I'm saying is, like Allah says in the Quran, he gives the parable of a man who is enslaved to one master and then there's a man who is enslaved to multiple masters which one is truly free when he has multiple masters one says pick it up the other says drop it down i'm curious about where he's going to go with that the other one says which one is truly free when he has multiple masters one says pick it up the other says drop it down the other one says lift it up or jump which one does he follow you will only find your true freedom by worshiping the one master, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is when I found my true freedom, when I enslaved myself to the one who created me because he's the one who deserves for me to be enslaved to. Otherwise, guess what? You are never going to be happy and your friends are going to come and the public pressure, uh, the peer pressure and the beauty standards and the opposite gender, they're going to be telling you, I like this. You don't know what you're going to do. It's like juggling 20 balls at a time. Which one? Who? That he likes the simplicity of Islam because Islam is saying that you only have one thing to be, have to be one thing to follow, one thing to be loyal to. There's not multiple things, it's just one thing. It's a concept of Tawhi, the oneness of God, and that, oh, I understand that being that. The, yeah. So you have so many things that you have to be loyal to. I have only one master that I have to, need to serve, and that makes it easy. Who are you going to make happy? And none of these people are ever going to be happy with you. And if you displease Allah at the pleasure of the people, neither the people will be happy with you, neither Allah will be happy with you. And if you seek the pleasure of Allah at the cost of the displeasure of the people, Allah will be happy with you. And even if they are happy with you or not, who gives that damn? My sister, free your... There's an appeal to it. When you're not able to satisfy other people and you think people can be trusted, if you could just say, you know what, I know Jesus loves me. Or you know what, I know Allah is happy with me. It just brings a lot of security in your... like oh, you know, submission what's for a reason. Right. Like, submission you know, relieves anxiety because you've right, given right, right. up the pressure of decision and responsibility onto the shoulders of someone else. Right. Yeah. This is why it's easier to recruit people into cults when they are having a lot of stress and uncertainty. Your Vulnerability. Enslavement of the, even if they are happy with you or not, who gives that damn? My sister, free your shackles from the enslavement of the beauty industry and this, this society which is hypersexualized and see you as nothing but a sexual object. You Hypersex society that is hypersexualized says somebody who believes in a religion that has literal sex slaves in in the Quran. Armin, no, that's not where the hypersexuality comes from. The hypersexual the the cultures that meticulously and obsessively enforce hyper modesty, those are actually the most hypersexual. The that's most hypersexual. To the point of sexualizing the smell of a woman, sexualizing the shape of her ankle, the sound of her voice, every right. mere resemblance of femininity becomes a source of our desire, temptation. Hence, Interesting. the in obsession with policing it because they oh. see sexuality everywhere.
and police it in an authoritarian manner. So hyper modest cultures are actually the most hypersexual. Because I've talked to people and seen videos of people that after they leave, especially like Mormons talk about this, because Mormons mm -hmm. are very similar in this way. And when they're leaving this faith, it takes some time for their brains to adjust. And they're fixated on sexualizing a wrist, you know? And it's because they were taught that every little bit of skin is a source of temptation and sin. That's infinitely more sexual than a society where both sexes walk around topless. Which is hypersexualized and see you as nothing but a sexual object. You have. You Wait, let me cl clarify that. something. There's nothing wrong with finding sexuality and sensuality and eroticism in these little elements of a female's body, a male's body, right? I'm not saying that it's like wrong or unusual or that in fact a woman's wrist or neck or voice cannot be very sexy and alluring. They can be, mm. right? But it's about the the fixation on it, the fixation on controlling it, how high control it is. Right. Because high control environments and ideologies are ultimately very destructive towards human flourishing. That's what I'm getting at. It's okay for ankles to be sexy, guys. <laughs> <laughs> My sister, free your shackles from the enslavement of the beauty industry and this, this society which is hypersexualized and see you as nothing but a sexual object. You have more to offer. And I know as a Muslim woman, you don't want to go and show your body. You do it because of peer pressure. You do it not because you choose to, because you are made to. And the same goes to the Western woman who wears a miniskirt, high heels, in the freezing cold, because they choose to. My backside you choose to. Excuse my language. My <laughs> backside you choose to. You do it because you are forced. I mean, to be fair, because I dress very pragmatically, right? When there are people that are walking around in like tiny little outfits in the cold, I'm like, how the hell? It could not be me. <laughs> it could mm. not be me because <laughs> I'm just so mm. utilitarian. <laughs> His point is useless because... You're like, it's the society that is me. It's not what you choose. It's not what you want. It's the society that is pressuring you. Uh, that this is, but, but a lot of what we want comes from us reflecting our position within the society. Like, what is, what, what are our desires without a society? Like, we are a social animal. You can of go course we are. What is our self without the other? We literally right. define ourselves in relation to others. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's the whole point of having... existential. I mean, that's the whole point of having an ego. That's the whole point of having mm -hmm. an identity. Your entire identity is your position within a tribe, within a society, within other people. The way we even define ourselves is with the mirror that is others. With the, like, we 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 are incapable of even looking at ourselves without an understanding of how we look to others. That's how we even come to understand that we even are. That's how we even, that's the, the very definition of our identity of what we refer to when we say I or me is because of our understanding that there are other entities that are aware and they are aware of our awareness. Mm -hmm. So, so, when you say, oh, this is not what you want, this is what society has made you to, you know, do. But other than very basic needs, most of our other desires come from what our understanding of who we are and our understanding of who we are is based on where we are in a society, what we are in a society. And that comes from our understanding that other people are seeing us. If you go through your daily lives and you think about why you do almost everything other than basic biological needs, you understand that you are doing the vast majority of your actions because of your your the position that you see yourself in a, in the society that you live in. Some form. I mean, of Ali, that, coercion. Yeah, 
I mean, oh, yeah, but that's why you stream. That's why you're streaming. That's why there are purple and blue lights behind you. That's why you have like the bitter truth name. That's why you come up with covers and titles. Like you are everything you're doing is based on all like that's why you buy a house that's why you go and to go to school and go to, to go to you know university you all family. of that yes yes Th these are based on definitions that you have for yourself as a muslim as a father as a husband as a son as a citizen all he of this is based on that, your though. he's just saying it's yeah. better to submit to one form of social coercion than many that's impossible to do that's impossible to do but i i'm i because i mean even if ali dava says it's one like he doesn't it's not just one okay he is a uk citizen and he understands what that means he's a father he's yeah. a i don't know if he's a father he's a husband so there he are multiple it's yeah he's a father he's a husband so there it's going to be multiple for you too ali dava but the point is i am criticizing the part that he says he's trying to separate your desires from what society has made you to want or go for but i'm saying that given that humans are social animals it's impossible for you to draw that line because there is no line there is no line there as we go through a process of self discovery and what we want we we discover that based on our interactions with the rest of society. There is no way that you could separate these two from each other. Forced to. You starve yourself because you are forced to. You get your lips done because you're mm. forced to. And some of them even lose their life in surgery because they're trying to get butt implants. Yes. And they are free. Sure you are. Instantly. This is determinism. Technically, we could, technically, we could say that nobody is ever free, okay? It depends on your definition of freedom because you could we could go the compatibilist model and come up with some definitions of free that that would be free because it's in line with your desires, your desires that whether you desire that came from society, sure, whatever. Or you could say if that's but based on your definition of what's free, then there's no one, there's no free action that you could ever have. Because well, based on Ali Dabba's definition of free, then we're not free at all to choose, which technically will destroy Islam. Because then if we're not free to choose, then we can't be judged. Because he's saying, oh, they get their lips done because they're forced to. I think that's very dishonest. Like, I, yeah. there might be very fringe, extreme cases of women being coerced into those kinds of procedures. That sometimes happens in abuses of relationships, certainly. But... Is that as common as people being, as women being coerced into hijab, into modesty practices? It's not nearly as common. No. That's very you're right. dishonest. You're right. But he's trying to the, make the, it. The force, oh, you're getting forced to get your lips done. He's talking about a, a, a social influence versus it's much more common comparatively to what he's discussing that women are literally forced into these behaviors a pain of extreme violence and sometimes death that's not comparable right. that force is not comparable to what he's describing as force he's trying to use a definition of force where when you are making any decisions because they're influenced by society that would be considered force as well philosophically that is also you being forced. But if you want to go the philosophical route, then there are no choices. There are no freedoms. We have everything is determined. But that I don't think that's the route what Ali Dabba wants to go because that will destroy the entirety of Islam because there's nothing to be judged for if that is if, if Ali Dabba wants to be a determinist. But in our daily language, we don't use the words force and freedom like that. Right? The, what you said, and I think because Ali Dawad is banking on his audience not being able to separate what you're talking about as force as the philosophical force, then it kind of puts the force that women are being made to wear the hijab are, are being made to follow certain gender roles or else they will be beaten as I showed you in the Quranic verse. He's trying to make equate that with the force, the philosophical force, but these are not the same thing. We understand that there's a difference between you cooking for your husband because he will beat you if you don't, or you wearing the hijab or your dad will beat you if you don't. We understand there's a difference between that and somebody making a choice because of the influence of society. One of these are not like the other. You can't just because you're using the force for both of them doesn't make them the same.
when it comes to making a value judgment, we understand that one of these is a lot worse. He's saying that because they know Islam is being judged for forcing women to act a certain way. And he's trying to make this all muddy and messy in your mind by pointing out that, well, technically we're all being forced to do everything. But that's that shouldn't be a trick that we accept. I'm just so sensitive Fuck. towards this since I just know way too many people who have like survived honor violence to just like mm -hmm. it's it's just so yeah, I just think about the pain that these people went through. It's not the same. Not the same. Definitely not the same. Save yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my dear sister. Please send this video to our sister. I don't want you to feel like I'm having a go at you. I'm having a heart to heart with you because before Islam, I was, I felt the same way. I felt the same way, my sister. You don't I'm know not, her. I'm not come, I'm not having a go at you, but I did compare you to a cum toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Yeah. God. You have not talked to her. You're just making a whole bunch of assumptions. You, you based on what? Like I was in the same place as you. What are you talking about? You don't know anything about her. Look at all of these assumptions that you're making about somebody. I'm having a hard talk with you because before it's not I was. Alibaba, <laughs> are you saying that you? Because I used to be in the same place as you. You used to be a cum toilet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I can't. I can't. <laughs> Oh my god. Sister, okay. I don't want you to feel like I'm having a go at you. I'm having a heart to heart with you because before Islam, I was, I felt the same way. I felt the same way, my sister. Allah is the only one that's going to be there for you in this life. When you die, when you're resurrected, when you're in your grave, when you're questioned, when you're resurrected, till Yom Qiyamah, yeah? Till the day of judgment, until the Jannah, Allah is going to be there for you. All these other people that you're trying to please, they are not going to be there for you. They're probably going to backbite you. They're probably going to have a party and laugh after you've gone. <sighs> that's what I wanted oh. to say. Till next time. <laughs> the people that love you they're gonna probably have a party and laugh after you die that's why <laughs> what are you talking about <laughs> oh, <God>. okay <laughs> that came out of about... field <laughs> I don't know about the people in your life Ali Dava but... so guys don't trust anybody don't do anything for other people in this life because they're probably going to laugh after you die and have a party. What are you talking about? This is dangerous ideology. The only relationships that are worth working on is relationship with other people. Look how he's dis being dismissive of the actual valuable and enriching uh, connections that we could have with other human beings and dismissing it as people who probably will laugh at you anyways and party after you die in favor of a relationship with a with something that doesn't even exist. This is very toxic advice. This is harmful ideal. This is a very harmful ideology. I don't like it. <laughs> Do you know who makes the most amazing, gorgeous, and other adjectives that I can't use here on YouTube? Blasphemous art ever? We do. And for some reason, we are giving it away for free. Download them now using the link in the description before we change our mind.